Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. And I'm just preparing myself while wearing this awesome new Avengers shirt right here that I picked up as a birthday gift. Because uh, I did show you this um, on my last review, but it was only a Charlie Brown review. That was uh, our birthday special. I figured why not because, you know, it was my birthday and I figured this would be a perfect time. And yes, uh, I just put in the sticker label of the Hulk from a doll banana. Yeah, because unfortunately this t-shirt doesn't have the Hulk in there. Yeah, that's a shame. Because he's part of the Avengers. Well, anyway, I'm, I'm about to review the film because I'm trying to keep the, the hype died down a bit. So that's why I had to take a while to review it. But I'm going to do it now. Called... Avengers Affinity War which is a story about the Avengers teaming up with Guardians of the Galaxy along with many others including Black Panther to stop the evil Thanos from stealing and collecting all the Infinity Stones so that way he becomes more powerful than ever and this was considered to be one of the most epic battles of the entire franchise and it already is because it just made over one billion dollars that's right one billion dollars worldwide and it's insane but it's also making just as big as uh, the movie Black Panther that just came out uh, this year as well it's still playing in theaters by the way and, wow, <laughs> all I can say is this is one epic film that I've ever saw, and this is one of the biggest events that we definitely really would follow, I mean, this is the most intense one of them all. I mean, Age of Ultron definitely follows that lead, but this was uh, really getting there, because now we get more... Uh, of all the Marvel characters that we all know and love come together and just to stop one guy and and the rest of the the crew to join in so that this is this is really big unfortunately it is one of the saddest ones that we had to face so I know this is not going to be easy to review, but I'll try, okay, I really will try. But in the end, I'm glad I saw it. I had a pleasant time um, at the theater on the big screen, just like how I saw the, the first two, but unfortunately I could have had a better theater experience uh, when I saw the first two films. So I guess this one kind of made it up. I mean, sadly. Because uh, the first time I went to see Avengers, back in 2012, which was considered to be the best superhero film ever made for its time, it definitely is, no doubt about it. Um, I almost had a hard time finding a seat. I wound up seeing this movie in 3D, and the 3D didn't do it for me. I ended up sitting up up close with my mom and my cousin, and because of that, um, I just could sit this too close. So I had to find somewhere else to to go back to to actually sit at a particular position that would definitely be right for me to see the whole film, and that's what happened to me. Because it, it was a huge crowd. There was a lot of people lining up to see it. I mean, this was the biggest one ever at the time. Yeah. Second time with Age of Ultron, but this time I had to see it at another theater. And it was one of the worst experiences I've ever had at a movie theater when I went to see it. Because we, we had a fight with the manager and the rest. And because of what was going on, they had to stop the film you know, during the middle part 
the middle part of the film that had all the action going. I missed like only, I think around 20 minutes of the movie. But luckily I got to see the film again. Uh, I still never forget that day. It, it was just embarrassing. And again, I saw it in 3D too. But I'm just happy that uh, when I finally got to see this one, didn't have a terrible experience whatsoever, and I'm happy for that. But by the time I saw the movie, just like everyone else had, it really got to me. I mean, it was very sad. I admit it. But hey, you know, I mean, that that's just how I felt when I saw Transformers the movie uh, when I was just a little kid. Um, I saw it on home video, actually. I didn't see it in theaters because I was only a baby at the time. And I just had my brother, too, who was born that year, 86, where something bad was going to happen to all the characters that I know and love. And I almost felt like this is exactly what was going to happen. So, so it, it's not going to be an easy film for me to review, but I'll try. I really will. So. And that's kind of ironic, though, because Transformers the movie was actually produced by Marvel. Yeah, Marvel uh, Productions. Um, but it's from Hasbro. Yeah. Well, anyway. <laughs> I, I know, I know. I'm, but, hey, I, I had to go for that. But I did prepare myself. Um, I actually took uh, the, my own free will to see the movie. And this time, once again, I saw this with my mom and my cousin because the last sequel I actually saw this with my family so that was good enough but I could have it could have been so much better but anyway but it doesn't help the fact that uh, I did have a good time seeing all three of them and I'm happy I did and you know, I still love these movies um, but hey doesn't always end happily these days. So let's get to the review, and this is such an all-star cast. And wow. <laughs> but let's get to it. So there's Robert Downey Jr., Chris Hemsworth, Mark Ruffalo, Chris Evans, Scarlett Johansson, Benedict Cumberbatch, Don Cheeto, Tom Holland, the other Tom Holland, Chadwin Boseman, Paul Bettany, Elizabeth Olsen, Anthony Mackie, Sebastian Stan, Donna Gara, Lydia White, Dave Bastista, Zoe Sadana, Josh Brolin, Bradley Cooper, along with Benicio Del Toro and Chris Pratt. It's written by Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely, which is based on the Avengers comic book by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. And it's directed by the Russell brothers, Anthony and Joe. The movie began set on the planet Zandor. We meet Thanos, the powerful villain of the universe, along with his lieutenants, to not only acquire the Power Stone, but to take over the spaceship by carrying all the survivors from Asgard's destruction, which includes Thor, his brother Loki, and of course the Hulk. They had extracted the Space Stone from Tesseract, as Thor suddenly was subdued to, but Fano suddenly overpowers uh, the Hulk and wants up killing Thor's brother, Loki. So then Hamdel had sent Hulk all the way back to Earth, and he wants up landing all the way straight into Sanctum Centorium in New York City, where Dr. Stephen Strange is at, along with his assistant, Wong. 
As Bruce Banner, he warns them that Thanos is planning to wipe half of the life in the universe. So it's also going to stop uh, all the Avengers uh, during the war. Once he collects all the Affinity Stones to put together on this one giant uh, golden glove. So that way he'll become as powerful as ever to wipe everyone out. Uh, anyway... So Strange suddenly recruits Tony Stark, you know, Iron Man, until Maul and Obsidian had arrived to retrieve the Time Stone from Strange because he had it uh, collected inside his chest. But it suddenly draws the attention of Peter Parker, you know, Spider-Man. So Maul captures Doctor Strange inside his spaceship but fails to take the time stone. Stark and Parker suddenly, suddenly pursued small spaceship when um, Banner, because he tries to become the Hulk, but he couldn't, because the Hulk couldn't let him, and wants up contacting uh, Steve Rogers, you know, Captain America, but to help them out. And Juan suddenly says, behind guard of the Sanctum, so then in Scotland, Midnight and Glove ambush um, Scarlet Witch and Vision. Yeah, and Scarlet Witch, which is Wanda Maximoff, to actually retrieve the Mind Stone that was actually on Vision's forehead. So Captain America, along with Black Widow, Natasha Womanoff, and the Falcon, yeah, Sam Wilson, had rescued them and take them shelter into uh, the Avengers compound where James Rhodes War Machine had stayed with Banner joining in. So their plan was Vision wanted to sacrifice himself by having Scarlet Witch uh, destroy the Mind Stone so that way they can keep Thanos from retreating it. But then Captain America suggests that they should travel all the way to Wakanda, where Black Panther is, to find a way to actually remove the stone. They'll find a better way to actually stop Thanos on this game. The Guardians of the Galaxy, on the other hand, responded to a call from the Asgardian ship, and they actually rescue four. Yeah, so that's when we see Rocket, uh, Groot, yeah, along with Star-Lord himself, uh, Peter Quill, Gambara, Drax, and, of course, Mantis from Volume 2. So they're trying to find a way to find Thanos, because he already got the Reality Stone. We soon learn that um, Thanos was the adopted daughter of Gambara. So they try to reveal where the Soul Stone is to save her... Captain adopted sister, you know, Nebula, from being tortured completely. So that's where it leads to the travel, and, and then as far as this is concerned, this is when they were getting ready for the battle that's going to happen. So now we have the rest of the Avengers teaming up to stop Thanos and the rest of his lieutenants and everyone around from a huge epic battle that we never know who will survive but this is one big event that's going to happen now after watching this movie at times I still enjoyed it I mean it was great to see um, that this movie had an all-star cast joining in together and it's, it's always fun to actually see all your favorite characters joining in for all the, the action and the excitement that we're going to go for. And also the fact that this is going to be uh, the biggest event of them all. In fact, this movie was supposed to be um, split into two. This was going to be a two-parter for the series. So not only would they focus on the first half of the war, but it's going to go for the second half. But they went ahead to shorten the name you know, by the directors and they wanted to focus on another story 
to go with it that it still would be part of it as opposed to Age of Ultron because apparently this was supposed to be their follow up to that so because they had a battle too in that movie I mean and it had uh, Quicksilver in that one which I know um, we, we met Quicksilver in the, the other two X-Men movies because he's part of it but it was played by a different actor uh, the actor in the Avengers Age of Ultron was played by Aaron Taylor Johnson and as much as I love that character yeah where he gets the you know freeze time and he gets to he gets to run as fast as he can actually saving everyone and stop dodging all the bullets and all this other stuff to fix everything I thought this was really cool for this character um, but the as far as Aaron Taylor Johnson's performance is concerned, um, he, he wasn't as good as as I thought he would be, and that was one of my issues I had with Age of Ultron. I didn't want to mention it too much, but because it's sort of a dead giveaway, and I begin to find out already what happens to him in the end. Um, it seemed like this was. This whole thing was a setup, but if that was the case, then yeah, there we go. It was the writer's fault. This is one of those movies that doesn't end too happily, as I just said it already. So, if if you're expecting all your favorite characters to survive. Well, <laughs> prepare yourselves for some Kleenex because you're really going to feel bad for them. Um, I don't know, it's really hard. It, it, this is one of the hardest reviews I have to go for because of the, the event that's going to happen. I mean, everyone's already feeling very crushed to see their favorite heroes and... I gotta admit, it really got to me too. It really did. But, at the same time, I had fun with the film. I did enjoy it, as it is, because it's part of the story. Um, it was great to see all the characters uh, lining up. I mean, it's kind of strange, but it's, it's almost like I'm watching a crossover of all your favorite the Marvel characters or any other stars give or take so it's like you're seeing all your favorite characters you know and love teaming up together so it becomes um, a war between the other villains up there that's what I'm going to say um, it's great to see Black Panther again after his first film that he got I mean even though, yes, we did get to see Black Panther on Captain America Civil War, so that was great. So it introduced him very well. Um, it was also good to see other characters joining in. I mean, it's great to see Bucky Barnes, because he stayed in the in Wakanda, you know, with the help of Captain America, you know, Steve Rogers himself. Um, it's great to see... Um, Black Widow again, and all the rest. Uh, it's great to see the the Guardians of the Galaxy crew, yeah, like Star Lord, uh, Peter Quill, with Gamora, Drax, uh, Rocket Raccoon, yeah, Groot, and joining in Mantis. And we all we all learned the secrets behind all that, and so on and so forth. Um, and then you got, um, of course, Iron Man, Spider Man, yeah, once again played by Tom Holland as Peter Parker, yeah, the other Tom Holland. You get to see Doctor Strange, along with his sister Juan. Um, you got to see um, Thor, 
You got to see a little bit of the Hulk. I wish there were more. Um, you got to see everybody. I mean, th this is really one big um, epic battle that they had. And I was happy to see that. And I, I love all the funny moments that they were going out with each other. I mean, it was like, oh my god. <laughs> They're just like... They're just coming up with all these uh, funny jokes. Um, sometimes they go for those pop culture references and everything that went into. Um, that was like, <laughs> that was eye popping right there. And, and then um, they kind of played it uh, pretty safe at times. And other times uh, they know they're going to get ready for it. Because, wow. <laughs> Alfano's though, for one powerful villain, I mean, he's he's definitely the most hated villain I can deal with now. And my and why would we? I mean, this is the the villain who who definitely did a lot of terrible things. I mean, you really want to hate this character so much after what he did, what he's what he did in the past and. And what he was going to do next, uh, once he has the powerful glove by collecting all the Infinity Stones to become as big as the Hulk. And he can wipe them all out with just one glove. Amazing, I know. It did actually have some wonderful special effects they put into when they try to get into those battles. They had everything that went into it, so they, they really, it was just really, really huge. But, take the risk, check this movie out, um, if you can, um, but you'll regret yourself for this, because um, this is not easy, not easy at all. But hey, in the end, um, I had fun, and hopefully when the next sequel comes, and there's going to be a sequel after this, I think it's going to be even better. Much better. Um, but so far so good, we have three Avengers movies, we had a lot of other Marvel films that's part of the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So they join in, they, they set up the story here and there, yeah, it really made it up for it, so I'm glad. Even if they play it safe or they just want to come up with other jokes, um, some are funny, some are not, so that's okay, I can live with it, <laughs> but all in all, it's great what we have. So anyway, I get Avengers Affinity War five stars. I'm Justin V. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.